Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 42 of Learn Lightroom 5. You know, often when we're out shooting, we'll come back and look at our images, and we have a particular scene, and we might have a bunch of images of that same scene. We maybe try different focus, focus points, um, different focal lengths, we might have tried different apertures or shutter speeds, but at any rate, this, the images are very similar. Now we're tasked with the job of trying to figure out which one of those is the best image that we want to print, uh, develop and print. And you could go through them individually like this and try to figure out which one you like best of the bunch. But there's some tools in Lightroom that help you do this and I'm going to show you a couple of the tools today. Now what I like to do first is I like to go through each of the images and get rid of the ones that are obviously bad. Maybe they're just poorly focused or someone was in the scene that shouldn't have been or maybe it was a group photo and someone blinked. Something like that. So I give them flags. And to give them flags is, is relatively easy. You have to know three keys on your keyboard. You have to know the P key. That means a pick. That means you're picking that one. The U key is an unpick, it means you don't want to pick that one. And the X key means it's totally a bad shot and you want to delete it and get rid of it. So we're going to do that. Before we do that though, I what I like to do is I like to see the image as large as possible. So you could get rid of these side panels by hitting these little expose triangles over there. The faster way is to just hit shift tab and that will get rid of all the panels. Now I'm going to leave the bottom panel though just because it helps you see what's going on down here. Now there's a setting you have to make sure is set. Go up to photo and make sure auto advance is checked. That way when we flag it it will automatically move to the next image and you could go very quickly when this is done this way. So my standards are very low as I mentioned. Um, I just really looking for composition and focus and beyond that I'm going to accept the image and make it a pick. So this one I'm going to hit the P key and I'm picking it and you can see it says flag is picked down here when I do it. That's a P, a P, a P, and you can see you could go very quickly. That's a P, that's a P. Now for the sake of this demonstration I'm going to unpick one. So I'm just going to hit the U key and you can see there's no flag on that one. So uh, this is a P. Now this one is blurry so I'm going to hit the X key and set that as rejected. You can see it said there. Now this one's even blurrier, so I'm going to hit the X key. That one's even worse. So obviously I didn't drink enough coffee for these first three shots. or Maybe I drank too much. But either way, those three are rejected. This has ugly vignette, but I'm going to make it a P for a pick. That one's a pick, and that one's a pick. So we have a bunch of images that are picks. We have one that is an unpicked one, and three that are rejected. Now what I like to do is get rid of my rejected images. I delete them right off my disk. And the way you would do that is you would go to Photo, way down at the bottom, Delete Rejected Photos. And in this case now, I'm in a collection. So it's actually not going to delete them off the disk. It's say remove these three rejected photos from Lightroom. And actually that's not true. What it's going to do, it's going to take them out of my collection. If I was in the folder, the, this dialog box would say delete them. It would give you the choice of deleting them off the disk completely, which I normally do because why take up disk space, or just delete them off light, out of Lightroom, which takes them out of Lightroom but leaves them on the disk. So we're just going to get them out of this collection right now. So now we're down to a bunch of flagged ones and one unflagged one. Now over here on filters, I like to do this and I'll just pick the flagged ones. So what it does is only it's showing me only the ones that are flagged. Now it didn't delete them out of the um, collection, it didn't delete them off out of Lightroom, and it definitely de didn't delete them off the disk. They're still there, it's just the view is being filtered. Now if you don't have these choices here, which happens a lot, these just disappear for some reason, <clears throat> excuse me, just go down here to restore default presets and you'll get them back. So now I have a bunch of flagged images. Now there's two different ways from this point how you could really uh, hone in on which one you like the best. I'm going to show you both. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you I don't normally use. It's called the compare view. And first of all, there's this is called a toolbar right here. If it's not showing, hit the T key on your keyboard and you can see it, it appears and disappears. So make sure you have the toolbar showing. 
Um, you can see there's grid view, you hit a G for grid view. There's loop view, you hit the E key for loop view. Then there's the compare view, and you hit the C key for compare view. Now what it does is it shows two images side by side. The first one they designate as your selected image. The next one is your candidate. And you can see down here, uh, two are highlighted. The one on the left is my selected image. The one next to it is the candidate. So what I'm going to do is, as I look at them, I like my selected image better than my candidate image. So all I got to do is go to this arrow key to the right, and I'm going to select this next image. And you can see it will leave this one alone, and it will replace that one with the third image. So I'll hit that arrow, and you can see it did. Now I just keep going through until I see one, perhaps. Let's say I, this is ugly vignette, just let's say I have very bad taste, and I like this one better than this one. Right here, you can see you're replacing Y, which is this image on the right, with X, which is that image on the left. What I wish they would have did is had R and L there. It would have been a little more uh, intuitive. Uh, so we're going to click on that. And what it will do, it, it will move this image over to here. This image won't be on the screen anymore. And it will select the next image and put it over here. So that's what it did. Now my ugly vignette is my selected image. and the candidate is the next image in the batch. And then I could go to the right, and if I like this one better than that one, then I could replace it. And there's nothing left to show, so I could hit Done. And that's my selected image. Now that's one way you could do it. That's the Compare view by hitting C. What I typically use, though, is the uh, Survey view. And um, to do that, what I do is I select them all. So right now I'm selected at the last one. I'll hold my shift key down and I'll hit the first one and it selected them all. Now to get in survey view, you survey mode or survey view, you could hit, click on this icon or you could hit the N key for survey. N is in Nancy. And it shows them all. Now they're really small here, but I must say I typically do this on my iMac. Right now I'm on my MacBook Pro. I like doing my, the videos on my MacBook Pro because everything is a little larger in the video and it helps you guys see when I do menu choices and things. When I do videos on my iMac, it's 27 inches and everything is really small. Although my view, when I look at it, everything is really big. So I like doing uh, my Lightroom editing on my iMac. Um, all the images are very large and I could really see which one I like better. But we're on my MacBook Pro now and I'll show you what I do. I have them all selected here and I could quickly look through and see that I don't like any that are really dark. Just my personal taste. So any that have this dark shadow I'm going to get rid of. So there's a little X in the corner when you hover over one of the images. Just X it out. And you can see that it starts refining its way down and the images start getting bigger as you go. So we're going to get rid of that one, we're going to get rid of that one, we're definitely getting rid of that one. Okay, now we got four that are some decent images. Um, this one has dark in here, but it's, I kind of like that one. I kind of like that one a little better maybe, but this one of the four I didn't care for. So as we go down, and you can see you could go really quickly. I mean, I'm taking my time now. But I like this kind of further view. Oops, I like the one that's kind of a little further away. So I like this one. This is my pick. So I like this. Now that I'm down to this, I could um, give it something to designate it like as my pick. And I usually use a star system. You uh, could hit your keyboard key 0 to 5. 0 is 0 stars. 5 is 5 stars. And of course, 1, 2, 3 are the corresponding number of stars. I just give it 5 stars by hitting the 5 key. Now it's set the rating to 5, and you can see now it has 5 stars, and it's really um, now very obvious that that's my pick. I could go back to loop view, I could go back and unflag, or um, yeah, just pick, turn my filter off so that I see them all now. But it's real obvious as I glance at the uh, thumbnails down here that this is the one I picked. Now I could go into my develop module from here, if I uh, so choose, and develop this image. And that's how you could quickly kind of hone in uh, which is your best image of a group of images. Um, you guys have any questions, always feel free to ask. If you guys could do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I really want to thank everyone that has done so already. I really do appreciate you guys doing that for me. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you guys soon.